Hello, hello guys. I'm here to talk to you today about what scrambling is, give you some examples of classic UK scrambles, and if you're brand new to scrambling, I'll be answering the all important question, can you do it? The idea for this video mostly came from talking with friends and family. After mentioning that I was going scrambling, I'd get a variety of different responses. Some seem to attribute scrambling as being some form of hike, but others would be genuinely concerned. My mum especially envisioning me as some sort of Alex Honnell type soloing El Capitan. And as much as I'd like to think this was the case, what I'd do is a little bit easier. The comments on my last video were interesting too, with one guy going as far as to say, as these all look dreadful, just climb on the main crags. Now, as much as I love a good hot summer's day at Stanage, and some of the scrambles I've done in the past certainly feel like full-fledged rock climbs, many of the other routes I've done have a completely different feel, apples and pears. From all this, it became clear to me that the word scrambling can mean very different things to different people. With scrambling and mountaineering becoming increasingly popular over the past few years, hopefully by the end of this video, I will have made the definition of scrambling a little bit clearer. Starting out, I'm not a huge fan of Google's definition, which is moving up or over rough or steep ground. There are plenty of walks where the terrain is steep and plenty of hikes over rough terrain, so I don't think this definition particularly works. The first proper article has a much better definition, which is scrambling bridges the gap between hiking and climbing. As terrain gets steeper, you need to use your hands to get uphill. This is nice and simple, but begs the question, where do we draw that line between hiking and scrambling? I've made a little graphic to help us out with this and chosen a couple of routes that are close to this borderline. Snowdon is a mountain most people should be familiar with. The pig track is one of the rockier, more exciting routes up that mountain. It's steep, it's rough, there's even bits where you may use your hands for balance. So why is this not a scramble? To make our definition from earlier a bit better, we need to add in a word, and that is the word sustained. The pig track has a few sections where you may use your hands, but these are few and far between, and often they're completely optional. This puts the pig track just shy of being a scramble. The next route I've picked is a scramble, but only just and that is Grindsbrook Clough in the Peak District. This route starts similar in profile to the pig track, but becomes more sustained and challenging near the top. Grindsbrook is not a route I typically do, as there's more exciting stuff in the area, but regardless, Grindsbrook Clough illustrates nicely the absolute easiest end of scrambling. If you've watched my previous video, you'll know that scrambles in the UK are graded on a scale between 1 to 3 with grade 1 scrambles like Grindsbrook being the easiest. Now, as a beginner scrambler, you should be aiming for grade 1 routes, but before you jump on a mountain, your first scramble should be chosen carefully. The reason being is there's a massive void between the easiest and hardest routes in grade 1 alone. On screen we have Grindsbrook from earlier, but if we compare this to a route at the higher end of grade 1, like Jack's Rake in the Lake District, you'll notice a considerable difference. Although the moves on Jack's Rake are relatively easy, with plenty of holes to work with, the 90 meter drop on the left definitely adds another element. Getting halfway up and then escaping off the route is near impossible, so it really is a more serious undertaking. A term every scrambler should know is being cragfast. This is used to describe someone who is essentially stuck on a mountain. Physical injuries can and do happen, but usually the term cragfast refers to someone who's gotten in their own head and is frozen due to fear. The first scramble I ever attempted was the mighty Cribgok. We sent this as a group of three and honestly we were all bricking it. One of my mates fully froze up on the knife edge section. We were able to gather ourselves and coach each other through it in the end, but ultimately we were a bit out of our depth. After doing much harder routes in way worse conditions, me and the friend in question look back on that day and laugh. However, with Cribgok being the busiest scramble in the UK, it is a big deal for the Clamberis Mountain Rescue Team, which receives around 200 callouts a year, with around 12 of those just being people with Cragfast. What I'm getting at here is don't run before you can walk. The mountains aren't going anywhere, so really take your time with this, build up your skill base before attempting the more serious scrambles. It's safe this way and you'll enjoy the process a lot more. Now, if you're struggling to find out how hard a scramble is, UK Climbing is a great resource for looking at the difficulty of a route within a grade. For example, if I look at Jack's Rake here, I can see most people are saying it's a middle grade one, but a few people found it a little bit more challenging and voted it as a high grade one. So I probably wouldn't be picking this as your first scramble. If we pop back over to Grindsbrook, which we talked about earlier, we can see that it's graded at a much lower level. 
So if you're a beginner looking at this, you'd be thinking, right, I could probably give that a good go. Bringing us back to the scale from earlier, I wanted to spend a bit of time looking at examples of low to middle grade classic UK scrambles. Roots of this grade are the purest form of scrambling, exciting enough to get your heart going, but not technical enough to warrant messing around with a rope. In rough grade order, the first few of these would be good as introductory roots, and then I've included a few harder ones that you could work towards. Now, I've not scrambled everything in the UK, so if you think I've missed any classics, please let me know in the comments down below. Okay, I'm going to stop the footage here with Wilderness Gully, which happens to be my all-time favourite scramble in the peaks. And it's a particularly good example of a route that enters into this murky zone of being both a scramble and a climb. To the point where Wilderness is mentioned separately in both scrambling and climbing guidebooks. Now that's not to say either guide is wrong, but it illustrates nicely what you can expect when moving on to the hardest of scrambles, or grade 3 scrambles. Scrambles of this grade will include sections of moderate or difficult rock climbing, which for a seasoned rock climber will feel easy. But if you're approaching scrambling as a hill walker, making that jump from grade 2 to grade 3 is a huge technical challenge. Being able to trad climb, that includes placing gear, yeah. lead beeling and abseiling are all skills you need to get on this grade safely. So make sure you have these skills dialed down at your local crag before getting 600 meters up on Tower Ridge and realizing you forgot how to abseil. Now, I'm not a rock climbing instructor, so if in doubt, please consider taking a guide and building your confidence and skills before you attempt grade 3 routes independently. I've been doing this recently while branching out into winter mountaineering, and I really do recommend it. Okay, I hope I've answered that original question and given a decent overview of what scrambling is here. But to answer my second question of can you do it, you really need to give it a go yourself. Here are a couple of quick recommendations to help that go smoothly. First of all, you're going to want to choose an easy scramble as your first. If you've not got that much experience on the mountains, getting some rocky walks in initially is going to be wise. The same with working your way through scrambling grades. Enjoy that process and don't make jumps that are too big. Number two, you're going to want to choose a dry day. Scrambling in the wet can completely transform certain routes and make them considerably more difficult. You don't need any additional complications, so try to choose a dry day for your first proper route. I like a dip. Yeah. Now number three, um, it's all about getting equipped. My next video is gonna focus heavily on this, but in short, make sure you've got a map ready and know how to use it, and make sure you've got proper footwear on. Trainers are not an option, so get yourself some walking boots or some mountaineering boots, if possible. That's it from me, stay safe out there, and let me know what you think in the comments. Check out some of my other videos too if you wanna see a little bit more scrambling content. See ya.